All right. Well, I guess we need to uh, we need to talk about the long ending of Mark, because mm. that is a, a topic that is brought up when we say <clears throat> that there's no major doctrine that's affected. But I do think for some people, like that's such a you know significant large portion of of scripture, you know that surely that's an important difference between the two text families. Oh sure. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, let's talk about that long ending of Mark. And I would imagine you, uh, you prefer it yourself. Yes. 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 I, I support the long ending of Mark, right? <laughs> I get one of those like social media profiles where you put your picture in there and say, I support the long ending of Mark. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I think it's original. I, I know there's discussion as to whether Mark actually wrote it or whether his contemporaries wrote it and put it in after he died or something. There, there's some uh, questions there, sure. Um, for, for me, I don't really need to go as far and ask those questions. I just think that it's uh, part of scripture. It's inspired and it's made it down through the ages. I also think it's interesting that despite um, current critical method methodologies of trying to take it out of the text, um, <laughs> they still end up putting it in the text. So it's still in your CSB. It's still in your ESV. It's still in the NASB. I haven't had a chance to look at the LSB yet, um, but you know they they continue to to put it in there, and and I think that's fine. And and if they were to take it out, obviously there would probably be a, a significant amount of uproar and a significant significant amount of controversy. Um, so I I think most publishers just put that in because it's better than raising some <laughs> issues like that. Um, but but yeah. So in in talking about the actual uh, long ending. Uh, it's no surprise I support that. Um, and if you're going to read anything on it, uh, at least in support of it, you want to take a look at the work of uh, James Snap Jr. I wrote, I, he wrote a book called Authentic, The Case for Mark 16, uh, 9, 9 through 20. That's something like that, uh, James Snap Jr. And he lays out probably in one of the most unrivaled ways uh, some of the evidence that goes in support of the long ending of Mark. And so one of the, the biggest and most obvious is that out of the 14 or 1500 manuscripts containing the, the end of Mark, uh, there's only like three that don't contain it. So, you know, three original language manuscripts that don't contain it. And of course there's weird stuff happening in Sinaiticus, which is one of the old manuscripts. There's, there's weird stuff happening in Vaticanus around Mark 16, nine through 20. And then the third witness is very late. I think it was like a, a 15 or 16th century manuscript. Uh, so, so on the manuscript side, uh, there's plenty of evidence. Now it gets, it gets a little bit more complicated when you look at ancient translations. So whether we're talking about Gothic or, or Aramaic or whether we're talking about Latin, there, there's a little bit more, um, I don't want to say controversy, but there's a little bit more uh, to deal with in that. Uh, but for me, just, the fact that the original languages contain such a, a crazy witness for it, it, uh, uh, it really speaks volumes. So when you move on next, um, some of the things that often are said, the reason why it can't be original is because, well, the long ending of Mark contains uh, words and phrases and the style is totally different. Uh, so we know that somebody else had wrote, written it. But again, I'm going to reference back to James Snap's work is, is he uh, knows of some research that was done where they've taken large swaths of the gospel of Mark in other places uh, where that same sort of inconsistency applies. So Mark, even though he's writing, uh, I, I can't think of the passage where, but, but earlier on, say Mark 10, there's a large swath of uh, of text there, which contains words that only appear once, which has kind of a different sort of feel to it than the rest of the text. So uh, it's not really a good argument. I, I mean, I, you might find it uh, helpful if you already believe that the long ending of Mark isn't uh, original, um, but it doesn't really stand on its own. Um, so, and of course there's, um, uh, what is it, witnesses of the early church fathers, a number of them uh, have quoted from it. I think Irenaeus is probably the earliest one to quote from uh, Mark uh, 16, 19, I think it is. Um, so there's very early attestation to the end of Mark. And so, yeah, the, the list just goes on and on. <laughs> so uh, yeah. for, for me, it, it's surprising that the modern textual critic community has sort of, you know, said this isn't really 
uh, part of me thinks that maybe it's because of what's in it, right? The idea of drinking poison and handling snakes and, yeah. and that kind of thing. That's a so, good point. Yeah, it makes you wonder because <clears throat> someone like John MacArthur, I was thinking about this as you were talking, Pastor John MacArthur is a very conservative, you know, <clears throat> if you said who's someone who's going to uphold the idea of the inerrancy of scripture, the preservation of the word of God, John MacArthur would be that person, one of the people. Yeah. But he thinks, I believe, he be that he thinks that the longer ending is not original to the text. Uh, right. So right. that's that's interesting, you know. And another person, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I'm afraid to say this because I could be wrong on this, but I thought Mike Winger did a real extensive study in it, and he kind of came away leaning, leaning. Uh, more against the long ending? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I, I don't think Mike Winger made any conclusions. I, I think he just kind of like, oh, I don't, I still don't really know. I, I don't think he made any solid conclusions, but he, I, I was certainly left with the impression that he was leaning to the fact that it was probably some extra, extra biblical thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm w wondering why, you know, uh, you know, because those those men do not strike me as men who would be quick to dismiss the long ending. No, um, no. So I think think that's interesting. Yeah, and I think we, we need to be really careful too when we when we talk about you know this passage should be in or not because oftentimes what happens is people on both sides of the argument tend to demonize the other person. Say, well, you don't yeah. believe in preservation. You don't believe in the Bible. You don't believe in, you're, you know, you're probably not even saved. Well, actually, I just made that up. I've never heard that, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the, I, I, I agree that the word of God and, and the Bible and textual credit is very important, very, very, very important. But we shouldn't be dividing over the issue, right? We, we shouldn't be fighting over it. We shouldn't be calling each other names over it. Like, let's let's just... Okay, you guys disagree. If, if you come to Mark 16, 9 through 20, then I'm just going to go to a different church for that week. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but you, you get the point. We, we just need to have grace with one another and, and stop calling each other names over your textual preference, right? Uh, so we're, we're bound upon, um, or we're, we're put together in unity based on the blood of Jesus, not based on the Bible translation we use. So. All right. So, so one person here said John MacArthur is a cessationist. Mark 16 contradicts it. But this, this is where it gets so interesting. Yes. Uh, thank you, Victor, for the comment. But again, Mike yeah. Winger is not a cessationist. No, he's not. And is no. not someone who I would expect to, to write off the longer ending. So I think to yeah. me, I'm just, I'm just trying to be objective. It says it must be a fairly complicated issue. Yeah. If, yeah. if you've got people that that's why I tend to be like, Hey, look, there are godly people on both sides of issues like this. So I agree with you. I don't think it is, it's something we need to make a test of orthodoxy in any way. And, yeah. um, part, so part of me I, thinks, I, it's interesting. Yeah. Part of me thinks too, is that as part of the reason why it's such a debate now is because when you consider, um, the discovery of Codex Vaticanus, uh, like that was amazing. That was an amazing discovery, right? From 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 the perspective of of uh, manuscripts and such, you have an entire Bible uh, just right there, and it dates back to like 300 or 350 A.D. Like it's the oldest copy that we have of an entire Bible. And and when you're you're so excited about this, and, and I imagine Tischendorf when he looked at this just just got you know you know what I mean? Like he's probably like I I found it I found it, and he. Um, and of course, when when the uh, scholars of the day start start looking at this and start analyzing it, they see Mark 16 is not in there. And because they're so excited about this find, uh, maybe they took that Mark 16, 9 through 20 and and uh, just uh, took it way more, <laughs> took it way, way further than it needed to go, but perhaps in their excitement or whatever. Uh, and so, you know, literature has uh, been written since then about that and, and sort of opinions seem to have been made already at that point and they just kind of get pushed down. And what happens when you have an opinion already is you miss, um, you miss some of the nuanced facts um, because you've already made up your mind. Right? It's, it's, it's a bias thing. We, we all have biases, right? I'm not, I'm not uh, pretending like I don't have a bias toward the Texas Receptus or anything like that, but um, but yeah, that, that kind of pushes 
the types of evidences that come to the forefront and, and all that. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. That, that's just a, yeah. a little theory of mine. 